gas versus hybrid versus electric cars. This is a question I get all the time. Which car is best for you? Well, there are some factors that you need to know. Gas prices and inflation have fluctuated widely since 2020, and new sustainability laws that are dictating higher mile per gallon rules are going into effect around the country. And it's no wonder that nearly 60% of Americans have considered buying a more fuel efficient vehicle, an electric vehicle, or a hybrid, and not sure which is best for them. And deciding whether to get a gas car versus a hybrid versus an electric car can be complicated. Initial costs are wildly different, and so are the yearly maintenance, car insurance, and fuel costs. To help you make the best decision for your family, for your wallet, the insurance site Zebra has put together some information that might help you. I've pared it down to make it a lot easier so that you can decide what's best for you. Whether you're looking for gas, hybrid, or an electric vehicle, we've made it more concise to help you decide what's best for you. Now there is much more, but first I wanna remind you to subscribe and click that little bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. We give you more than car reviews and first looks of new vehicles, we give you car smarts because knowledge is power. Before diving into the annual ownership costs, understanding how gas, electric, and hybrid cars work is critical. The way they work impacts everything from their initial purchase price to their maintenance costs. Starting with gas cars. Most gasoline powered cars use internal combustion engines. And when you turn the car on and you press the accelerator, the fuel pump moves the fuel from the back of the vehicle to the front to the engine. The pistons in the cylinders work to ignite the gasoline, which creates mechanical energy to propel the vehicle. Pretty simple. We all kind of know that diesel's very similar, but diesel is based on a compression engine, but still very similar in propulsion. In an electric car, power is from a lithium ion battery pack that is charged just like your cell phone battery is charged. Power is stored in the battery as direct current, DC, but an electric car converts that through alternating current to give it power. And when you turn the car on, the inverter converts the stored energy to usable energy by sending it through an induction motor. That energy in the induction motor creates energy directing it to the wheels and puts you in motion. Whenever the wheels move faster than the engine, such as deceleration or coasting or braking, the induction motor converts that energy, it's called frictional heat, same thing as when you rub your hands together, through regenerative braking to give it a bit of charge back to the battery. That's been used on electric vehicles since the beginning. Hybrid cars use both electric and gasoline engines, and they can come in two different forms. They can be a PHEV, which is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, so that's why you see PHEV, or it can be all-inclusive where you don't see it like in a Prius, which offers both. Now it's a blend of a gasoline engine and an electric engine or in tandem, and hybrids use regenerative braking to charge that car's battery pack. And in some cases, the gas engine may also charge the battery pack. So like I said, some are plug-ins and some are not. Cost is the most significant factor when you're purchasing a vehicle, and experts recommend spending no more than 20% of your income on a car-related expense. So whether you're buying gas hybrid or plug-in hybrid or an EV, whatever it might be, don't spend more than 20% of your income. Now, gas cars have the lowest initial cost, while electric vehicles have the highest initial cost. However, state and federal government offers rebates and tax incentives to make the purchasing of a hybrid or an electric vehicle less expensive. There's a lot of changes to the rules. We've covered that in a previous video. You can check that out here. Now this is based on where the car is built and may only be available with a lease. The rules are constantly changing. When it comes to gas cars, the average price of the 10 most common gasoline powered cars in the United States has an average initial cost of $33,797. Electric cars average price is $66,997,000. And yes, I know you can buy cars substantially cheaper, but there's also many that are more expensive. These are average prices. The federal government and most states offer tax incentives to encourage people to purchase an electric vehicle, but make sure you qualify before you make that purchase. With the recent passage of the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, the federal plug-in vehicle tax credit can be up to $7,500. It's a tax credit, it is not a check and there may be no incentive. The credit is a tax credit that you would apply to all of your outstanding taxes. Again, lots of variables. You really need to read the small print on these. In addition to the purchase of an electric vehicle, you may also need to purchase 
charging equipment, which is not standard across all vehicles. It's starting to become that way with Tesla, starting to partner in with General Motors and Ford and other brands. This could be the new wave, but there are still charging stations with different type of adapters. Depending on the charging option you choose, you'll also need to install a charging station in your garage, which costs on average about $1,200 to purchase and install by a certified electrician. Again, check with your insurance company for your home because some cover it and some don't. A lot of new rules in place. Hybrid cars have an average initial purchase price of $39,040. And if you purchase a plug-in hybrid model, you'll also need to buy a charging equipment and possibly install a charger in your home. Non-plug-in charge cars are a good option as they don't require this charger and hybrids may qualify for a tax incentive to lower that initial cost. The plug-in tax credit may bring the cost down to a lower price, but you have to do your research. All vehicles require maintenance and the costs refer to standard car maintenance to address regular wear and tear of the vehicle and keep it running smoothly. The major maintenance costs to gasoline vehicles are fluid changes and replacement parts like batteries, brake pads, and spark plugs and tires. The most frequent maintenance for gasoline powered vehicle is an oil change, which can range between $35 and $75 and the amount anywhere from 70 to $225 a year. Now, brake pads last about 40,000 miles, which can cost anywhere from $150 to $300 per axle, depending on your car. Now, per the Car Care Council, you should follow your owner's manual. Every vehicle is completely different, especially when it comes to oil types, fluids, tires, and everything. Follow the owner's manual. Now, maintenance for electric cars has some cost as well. Now the battery pack is the biggest expense, which generally lasts about eight to 10 years. And most manufacturers provide a warranty on the battery pack for the first eight years or 100,000 miles. The cost of the battery will depend on your model needed and the current availability, but count on that costing about four figures. And yeah, it's expensive, plus the disposal of the old one. You'll also need to replace brake pads as in any other car, but because regenerative braking, you may not have to replace them as often. Fluids for any moving parts will be required maintenance as well. Now, the big expense for EVs are tires. They last about 30,000 to 40,000 miles before needing replacement. And the cost is about 250 to $400 per tire. And that needs to be calculated into your budget. Maintenance for hybrid cars? Well, hybrids have both an electric and an internal combustion engine, meaning they'll have all the same maintenance costs as both types, but you'll still need regular oil changes to replace parts like tires and brake pads. I will tell you this, as a friend has a mild hybrid, they replace their brake pads every 20 to 30,000 miles, and the dealer told them 15,000 miles is normal, so you have to calculate the cost of brakes. That is a critical factor. Now let's take a look at insurance costs. The national average car insurance premium is $1,529, although that can vary widely based on your driving record, the type of car you have, and a ton of other factors, which we've covered in other videos. Because electric cars are more expensive to repair, insurance rates and coverage for an electric vehicle is higher than that of a traditional gasoline-powered car. Although the exact amount depends on the make and the model, the national average insurance premium for an electric car in 2022 was $2,280 a year. Generally, a hybrid car costs 7% more to insure than a gasoline powered car. We've seen it as much as 50% higher. So do your shopping on insurance. Again, we've covered that on a previous video. The higher cost is due to the replacement of the vehicle, prices, parts, and repair. Now let's take a look at average fuel costs. Now the average cost of fuel fluctuates daily. So we'll work on some averages here. One tank of gas for a typical gasoline powered car would cost about $58 and last about 350 miles on average, which amounts to roughly 17 cents a mile since the average American driver drives about 14,263 miles a year. And that would be a total yearly cost of around $2,425. Again, that's gonna fluctuate where you live and what type of fuel you use. Electricity is cheaper than gasoline. Well, it can also be more expensive depending upon where you live. The average residential electricity rate in the United States is 15.85 cents per kilowatt hour per the Choose Energy website. In June of 2023, North Dakota paid the lowest average residential electricity rates in the country, $9.72 per kilowatt hour. Hawaii paid the highest electricity rates at $44 dollars and 25 cents per kilowatt hour. That's a lot. For the average driver, that's yearly cost is around $998. Again, 
where you live is gonna be a huge factor and when you charge is going to be a huge factor and you have to do the math for your specific area. For EVs, it either costs less, the same, or more to operate an electric vehicle compared to a gasoline engine car. And while that's not a very satisfying answer, an EV will probably reduce your true cost of getting around, albeit maybe not overnight. Now, hybrid vehicles have a much higher miles per gallon rating. A popular hybrid will have an estimated combined miles per gallon of 52, which is awesome. And that means one tank of gasoline can get an average driver about 728 miles. And the average driver would spend about $1,137 per year in gas. And if they have a plug-in hybrid, the driver would be able to calculate the electricity and maybe just drive on EV mode. Now deciding which car is best for you that's a difficult question. When determining whether you should purchase a gas, a hybrid, or an electric car, consider the following factors. One, consider where and how far you're driving. And if you're frequently traveling long distances, an electric car may not be the best option since charging can be a real hassle. People have charging anxiety. And not only are charging stations hard to find in some areas, but also it takes longer than to fill up a gasoline powered vehicle and can add travel time to your trip. For long distances, a hybrid or a gasoline powered car might be a better choice to avoid range anxiety. Determine the model you want. There are more gas, hybrid, and plug-in hybrids and electric cars in production, and inventories are starting to increase, and we'll be covering that in future videos. Watch car reviews, read articles, compare insurance rates, and get financing in place before deciding. And take one for a test drive. You don't want to buy a car and then find out later you hate it, because you're going to be keeping it for a while. Plan when you need your new car. There are still many gasoline powered vehicles available that earn amazing fuel economy and great technology. Shop around and always test drive a vehicle before making your final decision. And no matter which vehicle option you choose, whether it's gas, hybrid, or electric, it's an investment that needs to be protected with insurance. And maintenance costs, charging, gasoline, electricity are all part of the cost of owning a vehicle. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, I'm sure you will. I'll be happy to answer. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee. The link for that is in the description, plus all the links for our website, social media, the book, and the podcast. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching.